endured some of the most difficult circumstances at my former job. These range in verbal abuse, physical threats, vandalism, and even having demeaning comments written and spray painted on and around my personal belongings at the job. I have gone through the chain of command as we were instructed to do, but nothing was done to end the harassment and the discrimination. As gay West Virginians, we have no support in the labor laws against discrimination based on sexual orientation. If the labor laws would have been amended earlier to contain sexual orientation discrimination, myself as well as other gay West Virginians would have not to endure such demeaning and inexcusable behavior from employers and employees at the workplace. What I have noticed is employees tend to follow the lead of their employers in discriminating and harassing others in the workplace. Why, as West Virginians, do you allow this type of behavior and harassment to occur and let go unpunished? No one should be judged by their sexual orientation, but by their job performance alone. This type of bullying and discrimination happens to children at an early age which can reoccur into their adult life at the workplace. This has to be stopped in order for us to grow as West Virginians. Would you want your sons, your daughters, your brothers and sisters, and even your grandchildren to go through the stress of knowing they could be at risk of mental anguish and even bodily injury at their workplace because of who they are? You can choose to pass this anti-discrimination bill and help West Virginians stop discrimination based on sexual orientation at work. The more hatred we let happen now is the more hatred we will have to endure in our future. And that is just not acceptable. In closing, will this be the house to stop the acts of discrimination against someone's sexual orientation or be the house to allow discrimination to proceed in West Virginia? Thank you. You know, there was a saying that I used to hear when I was a child. People would come up to me and say, Jeff, what in the Sam Hill are you doing here? Today, with a little poetic license. I'd like to change that. Today they may ask, Jeff, what in the Sam Hall are you doing here? Today, I stand here in celebration of President's Day, where we honor the first president of our United States, George Washington, who helped end the rule of tyranny over this nation. We celebrate as well the 16th President of our United States, Abraham Lincoln, who wrote, was the, who wrote and was the author of the Emancipation Proclamation, who helped end the rule of tyranny over people because of the color of their skin. So today, I stand here with you and tell you it is time to recognize clearly, once and for all, in the state of West Virginia, that all men and all women are created equal. These are individuals who are who they are. They have no more ability to change their orientation than they do the color of their skin. They have no more ability to change their orientation than they do to change the color of their eyes. And we need to know that we need to respect them for who they are and what they do, the job they do. When they go to work and do their job, that needs to be respected. When they go to work and do their job, and pay their taxes, I assure you, those taxes will be accepted.
when they live their lives and play by the rules and produce and, and product in, in a productive manner to help in society, to take care of our people, to take care of our sick, to take care of our elderly, to take care of our children, to teach them, to nurse them, to, to help heal them when they're sick, we need to make sure that the people of this state understand that they have the right to move freely in our society without oppression. I think you would all agree, do you not? It is time in this state, it is high time in this state, that no one can be denied the right to work or where to live based upon their gender, their age, the color of their skin, the God they love, or the person they love. So I implore my members of the legislature, and particularly my colleagues across the well at the House, to take a look at this book, this Constitution, the Constitution that so many folks have fought and died for in this nation. And I see many over here to, the, over to my right who have done that. To let them join with us and understand and realize that this book, this Constitution, isn't here to protect the 99%, the 50%, or the 51%. This book, the strength in this book, is in its protections it affords to the 49%, the 10%, and the 1%. That's what the, this book stands for. And I'm reminded as well I'm reminded as well in another book that means so much to so many West Virginians. The book in the, of the Bible, when I remember and I paraphrase and I'll use it again, when the scribes and Pharisees approached our Lord and Savior and mine and asked him what was the greatest law, and he said there were two. You love the Lord thy God with thy, thy old heart, thy whole mind, and thy whole soul, and you love thy neighbor as thyself. That second commandment, that golden rule, means nothing more than teaching, reaching out and treating people with dignity, fairness, and respect, re even when, and even when, and more importantly, because, and even when they're different. That's the strength of that golden rule as well. So I join with you today in sharing this day to ask the Senate and the House to pass once and for all a clear recognition that in this state, all men and all women are created equal and will have an opportunity to succeed and be happy if they play by the rules. Thank you very much. I just wish we all could live by the golden rule. That would be a great day. Well, I have um, just a few thoughts to share with you. Um, I asked to speak today because um, I was struck by one of the comments in the Gazette yesterday. Um, the head of the Family Policy Council, who is videoing me right now, um, said that the legislation insults the civil rights pioneers. Insults, so a, a, a legislation that would say discrimination is not allowed is insulting to the civil rights pioneers. Well, I'd, I'd like to have a little brush up on history. And I think I, I have a little bit of um, right to do that, having been very involved in the women's movement and having family members who were involved, who were at the People's March in the 60s and who um, were very actively opposing discrimination against African Americans in their daily lives and in, in legislation. Um, what I have to say is, on this issue, the Family Policy Council is on, of West Virginia is on the wrong side of history.
particularly bothers me to see the Bible being used to support discrimination. As I recall, the Bible was used to, to justify slavery. The Bible was used to um, justify control over women by their husbands. Remember the rule of thumb? That was part of our law. It was supposedly based on the Bible that you could hit a woman with a stick as big as your thumb. Well, at the very least, our state which was forged, and I mean forged in the sense of forging metal and having a battle over it. Our, our state was formed as part of the civil rights movement in the 1860s, in 1863. Our state should, should not permit discrimination against anybody because of their status at the workplace, in public accommodations, and housing. You shouldn't lose your home because somebody doesn't like the way you are. And it seems to me, <laughs> the bottom line is opposing this law means that you are for discrimination. And that is not what West Virginia is, is about. I want this state to be more perfect, part of a more perfect union, and this law banning discrimination because of sexual orientation is the way where we make our state more perfect. Please join us in trying to pass this and getting the governor's signature on this bill. We are not for discrimination against West Virginia. We are for fairness. Thank you.